Hello everybody, I'm David from Polygonic and today we're going to take a look at how to use traffic. Traffic consists of over 400 assets and there are lots of cars to be used. Emergency cars or cars which are suitable for construction, uh, you know, with those lorries and stuff, uh, or, or cars with lots of storage paint. There is also a lot of signs which are suitable for highways or to be placed next to any road and uh, lots of license plates. Yeah, we have lots of European ones and also American ones for each state. And I think there's also one Canadian plate. <laughs> okay, let's open up Blender. And uh, yeah, let's open up Angon. So I'm going to open up a new window, press the E key, and that brings me straight up to, to the assets that, uh, the asset packs that I have installed in Angon. Angon is a free asset browser for Blender that we developed specifically for our asset packs. It's really neat. You have all these previews to see what you're actually spawning in the scene. You have everything, everything that you've installed listed on the left here. You can spawn all the displayed assets, which uh, in this context, it would spawn over for <laughs> over 4,000 assets, which is something that you don't want to do, probably. <laughs> And there's also all these tags. So we're interested in traffic, right? So let's click on that. You can see that I was already scrolling through it. So I was in the license plate sections, but there are, you can see that there's a ton of assets. We can also take a look at what's new because as you might know, we have just released a version 2.3, which is um, an overall update for all the interiors. And there's also new controllers for doors and trunks to all vehicles. Let's say that I want um, a classic car. You can see that there's not much of those there, so let's select something else like contemporary cars. Let's say that uh, we don't want to browse through the categories, we just want to browse by, let's say, I don't know, size of the vehicle. So there's this filter co called dimensions where you can put in um, minimal and maximum values for the width, the height, and the depth. It's going to sort only the assets which have the minimal weight of 4.5 meters etc so these are like these are these are pretty useful parameters when you want to sort stuff by uh, size but there are also many more like um, manufacturing like the brand of who who made the actual car so you can filter by that and when you want to cancel any filters that you have active you just click this button you can see that we have three filters applied and boom, they're gone and we're back at the starting page. But let's get back to the interiors. If you select the high detail, you'll find that all these vehicles have interiors which are suitable for close-up renders, which is really nice. You can also filter through the version of traffic in which the vehicles or assets were introduced or by the license and last but not least by the model detail. Okay, enough about Ngon and its filters. Let's actually spawn a car and take a look inside. So I want something which has a high detail interior and um, I'm going to go, for example, with this Mercedes. First things first, when you spawn any asset from Ngon, it is still a linked asset. You can see that by, by, by looking in the outliner. If you actually want to go into the edit mode, which is something that you cannot now do, you have to, through the end panel, if you go to the polygonic tab and go to, to the Ngon, you have to convert the asset to editable. When you do that, you will see that the outlines of the meshes have changed and you are now uh, able to go inside the mesh itself. In most cases, when you're actually doing some arquis and you just need some cars which are placed next to each other on a parking lot or in a street, you don't even really need to concern yourself with converting it into editable. You just place it there and that's it. But if you want to control the rig and you want to animate, you have to convert to editable. Okay, now we can also go to the rig. You can see that I can select all the bones. And if I play around, you can see how it all reacts. You can turn the wheels, you can test the suspension. And newly, you can also control doors. And of course, the trunk. <coughs> That's cool, isn't it? All right. If you look inside, you will see how nice the interior looks. Even in just a solid view, it looks really nice. I'm quickly going to switch to cycles. Uh, nope. 
let's add a light so that we can see something and voila also going to turn on denoise just would you would you look at that so nice you can see that all the meshes are textured which is really neat also the fabric or the leather on the seating it's really nice okay so this is how you spawn an asset how you convert it into editable and how you control the bones now let's actually get moving a little okay there are a few ways to go about this you can either use the road generator which is still in beta or you can simply animate any curve object that you have uh, created so what i'm going to do is create a plane which is going to be my ground i'm going to create just a basic curve like this scale it up apply the scale and now if i select my car rig yes and i select the busier 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 curve and uh, select this plane as a ground and i click follow path check all these buttons you can see that something funky happened oh i haven't applied the scale for the for the ground plane of course but uh, yeah as you can see the car follows the curve nicely and uh, if i just apply the scale for the plane cool and if we check the wheels are turning there are a few settings to check or to play with. You can change the speed, you can bake the car steering and bake the wheel rotations, which is uh, useful for when you uh, don't want to do it first hand and you first want to just uh, tweak, with, tweak around with the speed and deal with the wheels afterwards. But uh, now I want to, let's say the target speed to be, I don't know, 25 kilometers perhaps, rebake, start and frame cool now you can see that it writes through the section much faster another cool thing is this let's say that we subdivide the terrain we subdivide the plane that we created and we add something like um mm -mm, where is it displace modifier new texture go into the texture tab select clouds um yeah increase the size or what is it yeah increase and uh convert no so where is it shade smooth decrease the strength a little little you can see how the car already bounces up and down a bit you can see that even without rebaking the animation the car suspension now behaves as if it's like riding through uh, over the rocks and if you want you can actually select the bone for the suspension and when you bake an animation like this which serves always as a good solid ground to build upon you can then go inside the suspension and add a few more keyframes of your own to to suit your artistic needs because like when you if I would go around, if I would go into this view and I would add a camera, move it like this, and then um, yeah, parent that to something that isn't parent that to a bone. Let's use the this bone, uh, parent to bone, and then take a look from the camera. You can see how the car you know if you have a camera and the animation already set up like this it's then useful it, it's then very good practice to go in and actually tweak some uh, movements that you would like to change or modify All right sorry my camera turned off for a second so we can see how now the car suspension actually accommodates for the uh, noise on the terrain and it isn't as smooth as it was before if we increase the strength you can see how um, the tilt of the car actually changes real time you don't need to you don't need to rebake for this sort of thing which is very cool if we actually like increase it <laughs> to, you, can, you can you can see it tries 
but obviously this is an extreme an extreme example but even something like this it just yeah it pushes through it <laughs> i'm just i'm just really quickly going to show you how to add the camera shake you select the camera you add a keyframe you go into the graph editor and in here you're going to that is unless you want to animate also the location and uh, yeah uh, scale probably not but uh, the location which i don't want to do i just want to focus on rotation and uh, if you open up with the end key the end panel in graph editor uh, there is a tab called modifiers in which there is a noise modifier now by default it is very extreme but you can turn down the strength increase the size and you can just tweak it a little to to get the motion that you're going for you can see how already it looks way more dynamic than it did before because it was completely static do this for all three of those and you will have an amazing you can also yeah this is a cool thing if you select the the noise modifier click this button to copy it go to a new value and click this button to paste it now the same thing is uh, on the y rotation and so you probably don't want it to be the exact same so it's a good practice to offset it or change the face but uh, yeah, okay. When you have this done, what you wanna probably, what you probably wanna do is add some textures and create the world around to light up the scene. We're going to use Materialic for that. We have to close down all the filters that we had. We want something, some ground. And uh, yeah, let's go with. Actually, I don't wanna use Materialic. I wanna use Botanic. And I want a particle system for for some grass, which all which will already come with a material for the plane. But yeah, let's go with this one. What I personally like to use is physical atmosphere add-on, which is available on the Blender Market as well. But uh, just to show you a more classical approach is to simply select an HDRI. We we have quite a few in our selection in Materialic. And I'm just gonna go ahead and select this one, for example. We have to give it a second, yes, to update. And now you can see how, how it looks. It looks pretty decent, right? At this point, I select a frame that I like. Let's go with this one. I'm not going to worry about the transition to the HDRI now that much because this is just for a tutorial purpose. But if you were to do a commercial or like a solid shot for a short film or a video clip, whatever, you would probably have to do a bit more work than just <laughs> put in a plane and an HDRI. You usually have to fiddle out to create the transition a little better between the two. But uh, yeah, I'm going to render out this frame. And now that we have our frame rendered, I like to go into the compositing tab in Blender. Now, uh, check the Use Notes button, create a new node called Viewer, and plug the image inside. <coughs> now, if you, I don't know if you're familiar with Compositor, but uh, if you hold down Alt and uh, select the middle mouse button, you can drag around with the image. Uh, without Alt and just the middle mouse button you drag around as in the shader view and using the V key you can scale down and up the image. You can scale down by just the V key and scale up with Alt plus V. I usually like to add a lens distortion node. I like the jitter. We want it to fit. We want to increase it just a slightly just a slightly little this just a slight little distortion you can also see how it kind of like blurs the corners which is something that you might like or might not like depends on your artistic vision and uh, yeah then i usually like to add some curve whoops some rgb curves and tweak around with, with the image a bit to create, I don't know, something like, yeah, just, just a slight little tweak at the exposure node. 
just slightly bright it up. And then I usually I like to add a glare note and uh, not the streaks, but change the type to either blue or fog glow. Fog glow is more uh, focused on the actual reflection. And uh, yeah, if you want to see just the glow, uh, turn up the mix, which is like a mix. This is the original image and this is just the glare note. And you can see uh, where the glow originates. So now if we decrease the threshold, which means uh, that from this specific value, the glow is, will start to emit. So if you put it down, you can see that the whole image emits because there's basically no thresholds. The whole image, the whole image glows because there is no threshold. So I want it to be mainly on the on the car hood, I guess, which is where the light hit the mo hits the most. And we can keep the size on eight. Now, if we go back with the mix to, to the zero, which is perfect 50-50 blend, you can see the difference that it made. It's very subtle, but if it were without it, you can tell it. You can you can you can tell. And usually I like to add in a little bit of glare to every frame just to sort of like um, increase the chance that it will uh, feel as a real camera. Okay, I think that's it. So yeah, here we have our final animation. Thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope it helped or gave you at least some overview or small insight into how to actually use our uh, traffic add-on. Let me know in the comments any feedbacks or what you would like to see in the future tutorials. Enjoy your blending in Blender. And uh, yeah, thank you again for watching. Have a productive week and uh, keep blending. Bye-bye.